Sure, I've seen real war, but will that prepare me for a great potato war? This is the Great Potato War by Skyblock. I'm Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, and YouTuber. Let's check this out. Oh, Blade, where have you been all this time? Well, you see, I've been farming potatoes in Skyblock. Wow, okay, cool. Uh, d d respect. Respect to the man going back to the simple life. It wasn't a joke. It all started months ago. I just got in a set of superior armor and wanted hot potato books to upgrade it. I could have just bought some from the auction like a normal person, but if Hypixel has taught me anything, it's that if you have a problem, the answer is slavery. So I had 20 potato... Well, okay, this took a turn for the dark. ...minions with 20 enchanted lava buckets, 20 super compactors, 20 diamond spread-ins, because it's, it's just free money. Get this upgrade. And with this setup, I was making about 242,000 potatoes per day at this okay that is industrialization at its finest well actually that's not what he's describing is actually closer to something like serfdom this is of course the medieval system of producing or tilling and cultivating land in which there would be a landholder who just was the lord lorded over the land and then there were the serfs who worked the land and whose well-being well-being was cared for by the lord the lord was expected to of course ensure that they were fed housed and clothed they were of course permitted to keep i believe a small portion of land that they cultivated themselves and they were in exchange made to pledge fealty and loyalty to their lord at this point i had enough potatoes for my armor i could have stopped i could have put an end to this but i thought no no, what if I went even further? You can check your rank in each individual collection, and I was already top 50 in potatoes. I decided at that moment that I was going to be the number one potato farmer in Skyblock. How hard could it be? First, I needed to get more minion slots. Now, I already spent a lot of time getting to 20 minion slots because I believe minions are important. I mean, they work 24-7, gather in resources even if you never bother to log in, and as such represent the only way to achieve the dream that all Skyblock players share, which is to not have to play anymore, unfortunately. Yep. We, you know, in medieval times, of course, if you had enough serfs to till the land, maintain your estate, then your job, of course, was to pay fealty to your higher lord. Your higher lord would demand a tax that could come in the form of resources, like, well, in this case, potatoes, but it may also come in the form of military service. You or one of your sons would probably be expected to su support the king in their military campaigns against other kings. And this system worked all the way up, so it might be a duke against other dukes, a I don't know, a Vicar against other Vicars. I don't know the medieval ranks. All the way up to a king. But that's what they did with their time instead of anything more productive. Fortunately, each minion slot requires exponentially more resources than the last. So I did what any self-respecting Skyblock player would do and sat in the shop menu buying ice for 30 minutes. I'm having fun. This is actually the reality of war. You may think I've lost my mind, but no. If you've been in my other videos, you know that the reality of winning a war is logistics. People, well, we keep making more of them, but stuff and the ability to get resources to the front can win you a war, right? That's because quantity has a quality all its own. And if your troops, no matter how motivated or elite they are, if they are unable to get food, water, bullets, and transport and medical care and transport then they are going to fail before an army that does even if that army is more poorly trained i drop you see it a lot of times militaries that are in the process of being defeated say germany after world war one before the defeat came the lack of resources the inability to get ammunition or food to the front was the first sign that the war was nearly ending because that was the thing that really defeated an army the iraqi army in desert storm fared similarly the u.s focused first on cutting off their ability to receive orders and their ability to receive supplies and after those iraqis had gone hungry for a couple days because they couldn't get supplies they were ready to surrender to u.s forces 
dropped out of college for this. And after spending many hours and 15 million coins, I finally unlocked the 22nd minion slot. At this point, I thought I had first place in the bag. I mean, there's only a couple of solo players that have 23 minion slots, and I figured if anyone went to that much trouble to get more minion slots, they'd probably spend it on a minion that actually makes money, like clay minions. But I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna go even more overkill, all right? I'm gonna upgrade my level seven potato minions to level nine. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, Technoblade, isn't that obvious? Isn't it just more potatoes? Why wouldn't you do that immediately? No, no, it's not, all right? Upgrading past level seven on minions never makes sense. You're never getting that money back because upgrading cost over 100,000 potatoes just to get to potato nine. That'll take over two months to get that money back, over eight months for level 11. It's just a bad idea. Oh, but Technoblade, isn't that just a long-term investment? No. No, it's not. Remember cactus farms? Remember how they were great for like five days and then the admins obliterated them in an update? Yeah. You really think your dreams are going to go that long without getting crushed by the admins? No. Okay, the, the eight months to return your investment is in the real economy a great deal. If something can make its money back in eight months, you are killing it. In fact, for a lot of investments, the idea is to make invest is to spend money and accrue debts that will pay off years down the line. This is how startups often work. In many cases, startups like Uber, for example, have never turned a profit. They've taken lots and lots of investor money. They've built out a very robust product, but they have actually painted themselves into a quarter because they have taken out so much debt that in order to pay off their debt holders, they are going to have to literally invent new ways because they cannot saturate any more of the market in terms of ride share so they have to figure out how to make something crazy like self-driving cars in order to get enough revenue to pay off the debt obviously it would have been better if they had just bought minions no you're never seeing that money again i'm sorry it's gone but i wasn't farming potatoes for profit i was farming them for honor for glory so I started upgrading them to level 9. My last hidden weapon was the farming crystal, which increases the speed of nearby farming minions by 10%. I could only fit 12 minions in that radius, but I thought, you know what, whatever. I'll just make a second farm crystal. Here we go! Oh, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm glad Skyblock tells you that after you make a second crystal. I mean, it's not like you could just tell me that after I make the first crystal. Whatever, it's not a total waste of money. At least I can auction... Thank you, Hypixel. If I wanted to fit all my minions in that eight block radius, I'd have to think in the third dimension. And so, after restructuring my farm, the potato pyramid was complete, yielding 309,000 potatoes per day. But as an ex-English major, I decided that math wasn't enough to defeat my enemies. I needed to consult the classics. In The Art of War, Sun Tzu says, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. So I decided to do some investigative journalism. I discovered a forum post from September in which a user named I'm a Squid Kid bragged about being ranked number one in potatoes. By stalking his profile, I found another post weeks later in which he suggested he was now around seven million potatoes. By putting these two data values on a grid, I could calculate the slope to- I thought he didn't like uh, math and it here he is. He actually is not doing this right. I don't know why the Pythagorean theorem is here and I don't know why E equals MC squared is here, but you can see he's actually properly modeled the potatoes. Let's see if he actually figures out the rate at which this person is gaining potatoes. By the way, guys, here to tell you, will you ever use algebra in real life? Buckle up. He's using it as we speak. Estimate his average daily potato yield. It wasn't perfect, but it was the best method I could think of to estimate how strong his potato farm was. I mean, it's not like I could just go to his island and and look at it. Wait, that worked? But what I found shocked me to my very core. Da -da. No, no, this can't be. This man made eight potato 11 minions and then he painted the Mona Lisa. It was. <laughs> At this moment, I realized that I wasn't dealing with the potato madman, but a potato. Also, that's Vermeer's girl with the pearl earring. I appreciate he is a much more generous lord than Technoblade because he allows his serfs to view great works of art, whereas Technoblade forces them into a sort of dystopian skyscraper of potato farming where the only thing overhead is dirt. 
super. It's like you're already buried, but you still have to work. The millennial nightmare. Super villain. At this point, I fell into despair. All sense of. I think he's the super villain, given that he is trying to destroy the beautiful artwork and loving project of this kid uh, through some sort of proto-industrialized pseudo farming rationality even the slightest hope of making his money back this man had thrown them all away to farm potatoes i had two more minion slots than him but his minions were so high level that he was still making more potatoes than me at three hundred and ten thousand potatoes per day but i wasn't even worried about his potato farm i mean i still had some minions to upgrade i was confident i could make a stronger farm i was worried about his head start the month i spent farming the pigman sword he'd already been farming potatoes according to my calculations he was already seven and a half million potatoes ahead of me wow who man and climbing that delta is climbing. Even if all my minions magically became level 11 at that very moment, it would take 107 days to catch. Huh, this is a really suspicious, suspiciously high amount of math for someone who hates math. I'm just gonna point some stuff out, at least in my experience, right? I was someone who really thought that they didn't like math in school, and that's primarily because Teaching math to a large group of people is a terrible way to do it. It wasn't until I was actually in my mid-20s when I took a business calculus course and I had actually earned, you know, like a little bit of money, like my military paycheck, and I cared a little bit about where it was invested, that I cared about things like business. And so suddenly, once it was things like calculating the change of a GDP over time or figuring out the rate of a business investment growing, that that calculus really became relevant to me. And of course, I also got to learn it more or less on my own pace, where I literally just did an online course where they sent me a textbook and were like, work through this textbook. And that was the best way for me to learn calculus. Catch up. I can't go that long without uploading. My fans will murder me. So was that it? Was my quest to become the number one potato farmer in Skyblock destined to end in failure? No, no, I refused. The sunk cost fallacy wouldn't allow it. Okay, are you sure? Because, all right, if you don't know what the sunk cost fallacy is, the sunk cost fallacy is a is an idea. It's a uh, incorrect line of thinking in which you believe that because you've already invested so much into something that therefore you have to continue to invest in it. An example might be something like a... Uh, oh, here's a great example. Mark Zuckerberg, you are Mark Zuckerberg and you are in college and you have invented the face space. And so, but you're also a college sophomore. So you have to ask yourself, should I drop out of college and work on face space or should I stay in school? The answer, you have to look at the sunk cost fallacy. Yes, Mark Zuckerberg had sunk two years into his education but at the same time facebook was earning you know seven figures at that point and so the question he had to ask himself is you know yes i've already sunk two years into this but here's why it's a fallacy no matter which choice mark zuckerberg made he would not get those two years at school back right you can't refund years of your of your time and so whether he chose to stay in school or transition over to working on his face space full time, it wouldn't make a difference, right? Those two years were gone. And so the question of the sunk cost fallacy is the belief that you go, well, I'm two years in, so there's no reason to even consider this other option. When in fact, there is good reason to consider the other option. Now, the sunk cost fallacy isn't the same as being like, oh, well, you should stop whatever you're doing and ignore the time you've already put in. Let's say he was one day away from graduation. Then it would be a different story. Would you drop out a day short of graduation, right? Miss your finals, right? In, and because in exchange for one day of work, you will get a degree from, you know, Harvard, which probably would have helped him out a lot at Facebook. So it's important to understand that while the sunk cost fallacy is a fallacy, the idea of, again, getting most of the way to a goal, for example, let's say you have a house 90% complete, and if you just pay another, we'll make up these numbers, pay another $1,000, the house will be done and you'll have a house that's worth $300,000. Well, it's probably worth it. Your sunk costs, right? Your sunk costs, you can't get back, but 
if you pay a thousand dollars or in mark zuckerberg's case you spend one day and you get your big a big payout it can be worth it if i wanted to defeat a man that had descended into potato madness i would have to take his insanity and triple it it was at this moment i spoke words that had never been uttered in the history of skyblock I should get minion expanders. Minion expanders have long been known as the most useless item in Skyblock. So you know how all minions have this like 5x5 five five area in which they work? They don't actually need this area. They could work with one block just as fine, because all they do is break a block, and then they place it right back. They don't need options. So what the minion expander does is it turns that 5x5 five five area into a 7x7 seven seven area. Why? Why would the minion need more options so it doesn't get bored? But with the Slayer update, they added a hidden attribute to minion expanders, which buff minion speed by 5%, which is still garbage. Diamond spreading gives like five times the value, and I didn't have enough space to put both of them in my minions. But unfortunately, diamond spreading only gives diamonds. If I wanted to become number one, I'd have to sacrifice all that free money for 5% more potatoes. With the minion expanders taking up so much extra space, the potato pure- This is, of course, we're gonna see the power of compound interest. Pyramid was no longer enough to fit all my minions within the farming crystal's radius. So I built the Potato Dome. Boasting five floors, the Potato Dome could fit all 22 expanded minions. And after I'd finished upgrading the rest of them to level nine, the Potato Dome could now produce 337,000 potatoes per day. At this point, the Potato Dome was the most powerful potato farm in Skyblock. I was ranked 20 on the leaderboards and rising fast, and yet I knew in my heart that it wasn't enough. Yeah, so here's the thing. When you can increase your production by 5%, the difference is he... Okay, first off, let's think about it. If you were producing 100 potatoes a day, that 5% would only grant you five more potatoes a day but obviously when you're producing 300,000 potatoes a day then that five percent gives you 15,000 more potatoes now the problem is is that he doesn't actually have compound interest here now compound interest would enable him to catch up with a small five percent increase because if those potatoes could be reinvested into more minions, more levels of potato farms, more efficient or effective minions, th and those increases could be only 5%, then you're getting into compound interest territory, where the more money that you earn, earns you more money. It wasn't even close. Things that also compound in this way are things like populations, right? If you have... Um, uh, an ant farm and that's not a good example because ants have queens if you have a rabbit farm well you're gonna have the rabbits going to make more and more rabbits so if you can increase the rate at which your rabbits breed by five percent after five or six generations you're going to be looking at hundreds or even thousands of more rabbits but what more could I do? Farm potatoes by hand? I actually did for like an hour. It made a tiny dent. Sure, it would have worked eventually, but come on. Is mindlessly repeating the same task for hundreds of hours really what Skyblock's all about? Okay, yeah, pretty much, but I wasn't about to do that, man. When I said 100 hours, I was not kidding. And yet, as time went on, it began to seem like that was truly the only way. The opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself sun Tzu. i i wonder if that's true i don't know if people have been falsely attributing quotes to sun Tzu for so long that i have no idea what he actually says i know what you're thinking you're like paul you were actually a combat commander in afghanistan and you didn't read sun Tzu. no because here's the reality of sun Tzu. sun Tzu was writing in i think like 600 a.d so his thoughts on war were things that are that if you think about it are so obvious that they're sort of not helpful. Like, know your enemy and know yourself. Well, no kidding. That's like saying, imagine a football team being like, who are you playing this week? And they go, I don't know. Like, of course you gotta know who your enemy is. Like, a uh, duh. I'd done it. I discovered a critical flaw with Squid Kid's potato farm. His minions were too close together. Now, with any other kind of minion, that wouldn't have mattered at all, but potato minions are unique. When they're too close together, they'll start trying to plant in spots the other minions already planted and get stuck in an infinite loop 
dragging down the overall farm's potato output by as much as 90%. The reason he hadn't noticed this and was still first place in potatoes is because this only happens when someone is online and on the island, because otherwise Skyblock just runs a calculation to guess how many resources your minions would have made while you were offline. Anyways, he left the door to his AFK machine open, so I left my alt in there. Welcome to the real world, Squid Kid. Okay, can we take a moment to talk about Jerry, alright? I got a Jerry here. I got a Jerry there. There's actually, there's actually two Jerry's in there. I have video evidence, okay? Look at this. He's multiplying. He's undergoing mitosis. But that's not all the other day. I was just minding my business and then... Why is he there? I knew I couldn't rely just on sabotage to get first place because who knows if there's other people out there just like Squid Kid throwing away everything just to farm more potatoes. So I decided to look into... all. Guys, sabotage and deception is a long-standing uh, tradition in warfare. And what he is talking about is targeting what's called the industrial base. So in World War II, right, one of the early first really proper industrial grade wars, the allied forces used their strategic bombers not to target German military facilities, but in fact, they targeted German industry they would go after plants um, uh, that manufactured components to weapons to vehicles to whatever it was in fact one of the most common targets was actually ball bearing plants and that's because ball bearings were essential in producing vehicles producing aircraft producing uh, the machines that would go on to make things like weapons and so by targeting those the thinking was that the allies would diminish german the German ability to produce the material for war, which as we discussed, if you can gain a material advantage in a conflict, you can gain a military one as well. And so he is able to do that. He is damaging their industrial base, though in World War II, unlike what old Technoblade is seeing with, by the, from the start of the war to the end, German war production actually still increased. But maybe it would have increased even more if the Allies hadn't been continuously trying to bomb the factories. Alternate fuel sources for my minions. I mean, enchanted lava buckets are already the most efficient permanent fuel source in the game, but what about temporary fuel sources? So I got a bunch of hamster wheels, which give twice as much of a boost, 50%, but for only a day. And I threw like a hundred of them into the potato dome, and it started making 450,000 potatoes per day. And so the days went by. Every day I'd log in an AFK on Squid Kid's Island with my alt while my minions burned through hamster wheels, quickly bringing me into the potato top 10. Ooh. I was finally making good progress until one day when I went to AFK on his island again. Oh God, he's online. What do you want? <laughs> Why do you keep doing this? Mm -hmm. I just I, I just wanted to check on the last supper, man. You AFK'd on my island for 12 hours! It was a good painting! I figured Squid Kid would find it a little bit suspicious if the same guy was AFK at his island every day, so I got a second account. Mm -hmm. And then I left them both in there. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. What? Why? Why are you guys here? I've been buying some enchanted baked potatoes from the auction house. It's not the most efficient use of my money, but look, I need potato 11 minions if I want to catch up as quickly as possible. We can't only have two. It's not enough. Well, well, I mean, it is enough, but I want to upload within the next year. But the problem with the auction house is that it's filled with crazy people. Look, look at this guy. He's bidding 3.9 mil for 26. You think that's bad? 11 million! I, I could see someone bidding uh, 7 million on a stack of enchanted baked potatoes. 8 million? I could understand that. 11 million? Deranged psychopath. There's no justification. Guys, I am gonna tell you, I don't have any context for what a potato is worth in Minecraft. Se I don't even, I'm not even sure I could tell you what a potato is worth here in regular America anymore. 7% inflation. 7%. This is why I got chickens. They're, they give me eggs for free. And this man to All I need to do is constantly yell at them for pooping on things. Prison. After a couple days of minion farming and buying enchanted baked potatoes, we have 102, which in regular potatoes is over 2.6 million, and we can only make we can only make four 
maxed potato minions with it. That's all we can make. That's how expensive maxed potato minions are. They're so good, but it doesn't matter because they cost so much. It's never going to pay off. They're all they're all gone. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's for the leaderboards. I had to sell everything so that I could invest it in potatoes, man. I had to sell my young dragon armor, my rare cake collection, massively overinflated Halloween items. I had to mortgage my house. It's crazy out there. Guys, so there is something deep in human psychology that drives them to compete, that makes them go all in. And I understand when there's a payoff at the end of it, but oftentimes you see people who don't really have any meaningful payoff. I think about, if you ever seen the documentary King of Kong, this is about a subculture of people who aspire to gain the world record in the game Donkey Kong. This wasn't filmed in the 80s, it was filmed in like 2006, right? Long after nobody cared at all about Donkey Kong except for these other people but that dominated their lives to the exclusion of many, many other things. It's tough to know what drives people to do these things. Obviously, in the case of gambling, it is because of the ability of an intermittent reward to hijack your own sort of brain's internal reward calculus. There's something about the prospect of maybe possibly winning big that keeps gamblers coming back. And it's not an accident. The casinos know exactly what they're doing, and they always have an edge. I actually did pretty well during the Halloween events, which allowed me to raise a lot of money. But I'm just saying, look at this spooky pile, right? Limited edition item with my name and pig rank stamped on them. Could you imagine how much money I would make if I put this on the auction? I would make Dan TDM's 15 mil water bottle look like tap water. He left a sign for me, whitelisted. What do you want from me? <laughs> I'm just ruining Squid Kid's whole life. He's traumatized. He's just living in fear. Why are they here? Why do they keep showing up? But after a few days, I ran out of hamster wheels and I had to resort to my final weapon, the catalyst. The catalyst is the strongest fuel source in the game, tripling your minion output, but they only last for three hours. Fortunately, I had a couple. With the power of Catalyst, my potato output skyrocketed, and I put that all back into leveling up my minions. And in a matter of days, I had 22 potato 11 minions producing 893,000 potatoes per day. I buddy. I don't make hot potato books. I make hot potato libraries. Originally, I thought I'd have to go bankrupt buying catalysts if I wanted to catch up to Squid Kid, but I actually discovered that catalysts are amazing. I can buy the materials to make one for like 10,000 coins on the auction. Just 10,000 coins, guys. Is that a lot? I don't know. I don't even know if, what the normal prices should be in my regular day-to-day -day life. And then each of them makes 14,000 coins and potatoes. This is a miracle. It's free money. So every day I sold hot potato books and then I bought more crystals. And then I sold more hot potato books and then I bought more crystals. And that's the story of how I made infinite money. Well, not really, because you can only use so many per day, but I made a lot and now... I was ranked three in potatoes. I oh my God, we're at potato end game. Did some more investigative journalism and found the guy ranked number two in potatoes. I'm gonna give you guys three guesses as to who left a funny rating on his post. Squid Kid! I was right on his tail, but I decided to visit his island to see just how strong his potato farm was. Oh, this is a joke. This this is pathetic. Only 18 minion slots. This this is just sad. I've seen Irish famines with more potatoes than this farm. You might Ooh, buddy. Ouch. I get away with this farm in some garbage vegetable like carrots, but potatoes, how dare you? Oh my god. Guys, what makes potatoes such a commonly used food source is actually the fact that one, they store for a long time relative to other vegetables. A tomato, for example, will without refrigeration last maybe a week if you're lucky. In contrast, a potato could remain edible for up to a month. If you know that you don't even have to really refrigerate potatoes when you buy them in their big sack, you just stick them in a cabinet somewhere and they last. Not only that, but potatoes are, while they're not able to be eaten raw, potatoes are subsequent potatoes seeds. So it makes them very efficient as a cash crop. You can plant part of a potato and it will grow into another full grown potato. All right. And 
The other thing is that they're relatively nutritious compared to, again, something like a leafy vegetable or even uh, a cucumber, for example. Potatoes are really calorie dense. They're very full of starches. So that's why among a lot of traditional societies that had access to potatoes or sweet potatoes, another root vegetable with a different uh, a similar style of growing, but a slightly different uh, nutritional property. Uh, that's why they're so popular in societies that had access to them. God, this crystal, this crystal, it only covers five of these minions. Oh, 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 I'm gonna throw up. Against a farm like that, I easily took rank number two. It seemed like I was only one step away from my potato dreams, and yet Squid Kid had been so dominant on the potato leaderboards that he was still three million potatoes ahead. But well, he's making almost that a day. So what is the question now you have to get is how fast is the distance closing? He should be closing in on the squid kid, but is he? That's the ultimate question here. With Catalyst, such a lead could be destroyed in a matter of days. Still, to be safe, I kept AFK in on his island until one day. I checked my alt's window for a moment and the island was full. Two guys I'd never heard of before had called the police on Squid Kid and brought a helper to investigate him. Who called the police? Whitelisted. Are you Squid Kid's alt? No, I just AFK here a lot as a hobby. I'm so suspicious. He doesn't believe me at all. I'm getting banned. They'd been investigating while Squid Kid was offline. I met him later that day and decided to warn him. Squid. I know we've had our differences, but the police are after you, man. I saw a helper. I saw a helper, Squid. There were two dudes, Squid. They came to your island with, with the helper. They were snitching. I don't know why. I need names. Okay, let me get my, my screenshots. I gotta be careful, man. The snitches be everywhere. Anyways, I'm gonna go AFK now. Just act natural. Just <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gone. It seemed strange to be helping my number one enemy, but his sheer dedication to farming potatoes had earned my respect. I had. Yep, this is one of the things that Sun Tzu doesn't talk about is that at the end of the day, it's hard in a war to not respect your enemy. They are obviously fighting tooth and nail against you. They're using their best tactics, their most innovative ways. And it, ultimately, if you don't respect them, you have, you have to respect them in order to take the threat they pose seriously. This is, these things are two sides of the same coin. The respect you have for the enemy and their lethality, and your own fear around their ability to, you know, kill you. To give him help. From or in this case, make potatoes. One potato brother to another. Also, I'm deeply scared of him. Did you see what he said when I told him the names? Names noted. That is serial killer talk. We ain't gonna be hearing from those two guys ever again. I kept farming potatoes, and in a matter of days, Squid Kid's lead was almost completely destroyed. And yet Squid Kid himself had no idea. He even put a billboard on his island, number one in potatoes. But why would he suspect? Just a few days ago, he'd seen proof on the forums that he was millions in the lead. The poor fool had no idea what was coming. Has it updated? It hasn't updated. All right, I'm going to the hub. Has it updated? Ah! Yes! <laughs> Number one in potato! <laughs> Victory, but for how long? <laughs> to celebrate, I took my two alts and my main account, and then I AFK'd on all three of them! Hey! I think at this point, Squid Kid knew that the alts were mine, but he was so confused. Why? Why had Technoblade been AFK and on his island for weeks? He was so confused that he didn't even realize that his potato leaderboard spot had already been taken. So I went to confront him myself one final time. What do you want? Why are you doing this? I love how he's voice acting both of them. Potato rank one spot. And his voice of himself is like a, a drunk Rick. But is now mine. <laughs> He's checking. He's checking. <laughs> Damn. How? <laughs> For years, my machinations lay undetected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, some people, this is their whole life, my man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
This is all I have. Bad. Squid. Squid, I found a problem with your island. A critical flaw. Get over here. Over here! Squid! Squid, get over here. This sign, it has the wrong number. <laughs> Damn, what a jerk. <laughs> Pretty bad week for Squid Kid overall, I'd say. First he got arrested, and then I cyberbullied him, but it had to be done. And let me just say, there is no chance of him catching up. I even got 23 minion slots just to bury any hope he had. This spot is mine. And that's the story of how I became number one on the potato leaderboards. And we lived happily ever after. All the loose ends finally tied together. Well, except for one thing. Oh god, there's another one. There's another Jerry, and he's what? staring right at me. <gasps> There's another one. There's a Jerry in the water. No. What? What is this? Oh, what are these no, things? No, 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 no. <gasps> There's another one out there. I don't understand. What do you want? What do you want? <gasps> There's another Jerry on the bridge. They've, they've got me surrounded. I don't understand. Uh all right, well, that was really weird. That was incredibly bizarre, guys. That has uh, nothing to do with real war. I am here to tell you. But nonetheless, that was pretty fun. Get to be honest, that was a lot of fun. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. And be sure to follow me on Twitch. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.